Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cloud Solutions Academy. I'm Naveen Balani. In this week's episode, we'll be talking about Google Anthos clusters on bare metal. So let's get started. So what is Google Anthos clusters on bare metal? Google Anthos clusters on bare metal basically allows you to install Anthos clusters directly on bare metal servers running Linux operating systems such as Ubuntu, Red Hat, and CentOS without the overhead of any virtualization technology. Anthos clusters on bare metal provides the flexibility to enterprises to run Anthos Google Kubernetes engine clusters directly on their own environment or on-premises data center. With this approach, enterprises can deploy and run cloud-native applications directly on GKE clusters running in their own environment on supported hardware and operating systems. The Google Kubernetes engine clusters can be centrally managed using Google Cloud Console and leverage the central monitoring and logging capabilities through cloud monitoring. Running Anthos clusters directly on your own infrastructure gives the same unified capabilities of managing and monitoring Anthos on the cloud with improved performance, security, cost, and direct control of applications running inside your own enterprise infrastructure. Anthos clusters on bare metal allow enterprises to deploy and data and compute workloads at the edge locations closer to end users or systems to realize various use cases which require ultra low latency capabilities or maybe near real time decision making. Now with Internet of Things and 5G gaining momentum, in future we would see new class of applications which require new set of requirements like uh, near real time decision making, ultra low latency streaming applications, immersive and 3D experiences and the whole notion of collective intelligence where humans and system would learn from each other. So industries needs to be agile and be prepared for such transformation in future. For instance, various industrial automation use cases like uh, condition based monitoring, predictive maintenance, using augmented reality and virtual reality for inspecting the manufacturing plants, all would require edge computing to process data at the edge and take corrective actions quickly. Similarly, consumer driven use cases like uh, using digital mirrors for trying apparel outfits, use of augmented reality virtual reality applications for immersive online education in schools and universities, connected environment use cases like connected home, connected car, all would require applications running on the edge to provide near real time and true connected experience. With Anthos clusters on bare metal, all the use cases that I described becomes a reality and you can leverage the same unified capabilities of Anthos platform that I described in episode 2 to build, manage, deploy, secure and govern cloud native applications at the edge location. Next we look at how to install Anthos clusters on bare metal. Anthos clusters on bare metal require minimum hardware requirement to run on a supported Linux operating system. The Linux operating system currently supported are CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Ubuntu and specific versions are only supported. With respect to hardware requirements, we require a minimum of three machines to install Anthos clusters on bare metal servers but in real world you would need at least five machines for high ability and resiliency. The minimum hardware configurations required are four CPUs, 32 GB RAM and 120 GB of boot storage. So let's look at the deployment topology of these machines in detail. Anthos clusters on bare metal supports three deployment models, standalone, multi-cluster and hybrid deployment model. And based on the deployment model, Kubernetes clusters are installed for running and managing workloads. The Kubernetes clusters can be of two types, user cluster and admin cluster. The user cluster basically runs your workloads. It consists of control plane nodes for managing the cluster and its states and worker nodes which executes the workload. Admin clusters is basically used to manage user clusters like creating, updating and deleting user clusters. It only consists 
of a control plane nodes where the Anthos management components are deployed. Admin clusters also hold service account key to access required Google services and secured keys for remote cluster management. So as a good practice, do secure the admin clusters and provide only the required roles for accessing the admin clusters. Now when it comes to deployment model, the standalone deployment model is basically a single cluster that serves as both admin cluster as well as user cluster. The standalone deployment model lets you manage every cluster independently and is basically used where you need uh, strict isolation with other clusters, maybe due to various compliance and regulation requirements. The multi-cluster deployment model consists of one admin cluster and multiple user clusters. Multi-cluster deployment model lets you manage multiple user clusters across workloads. This model is usually preferred where you have multiple project teams with uh, different workloads requirements that needs to be executed independently but centrally managed securely through an admin cluster. And the last deployment model is hybrid cluster deployment which is pretty much same as multi-cluster deployment with the ability to run user workloads on admin cluster also. So this deployment model basically gives the flexibility to reuse your admin cluster environment to run additional workloads based on your infrastructure usages. Next we look at the high ability deployment topology or Anthos or bare metal. The high ability deployment topology has three control planes running in the user cluster. The control plane apart from running Anthos management components runs the load balancer component. You can also choose to use an external load balancer and configure it to run with Anthos clusters. The configuration of choosing an internal versus external load balancer is specified via the configuration file that is provided during deployment. In next week's session, we would be carrying out a lab session where we would be installing Anthos clusters on bare metal servers and also go over the deployment file in detail. Now the bundle load balancer has a prerequisite of load balancer nodes to be in the same L2 subnets for its internal working, basically due to its dependency on address resolution protocol for announcing node addresses across network. You also need to configure virtual IPs for control plane to send traffic to Google Kubernetes engine, Kubernetes API server and for ingress for internal service invocation. As part of the lab, we would cover all of these configurations in detail. The topology has three worker nodes for running your application workloads. The three worker nodes are configured for high ability and resiliency. The worker node does not have any restriction on L2 subnet and can reside in a regular L3 subnet. In the next week's episode, we'll be carrying out a lab session where we would deploy Anthos clusters on bare metal servers and go through the entire deployment process in detail and also deploy a sample application to demonstrate end-to-end -end functionality. So this concludes our session. Hope you found the session useful and please do subscribe to the channel to receive regular updates. Till then, have a great week and thank you for watching.